Hello and welcome to this Soul Leader podcast series for authentic leadership from the heart with me, Nadine, broadcaster and journalist, and joined by Rashid, who's a coach, speaker, author and founder of Soul Leader. Now, in each episode, we lift the lid on an important and often challenging issue in leadership life, but always through the lens of being authentic, heart-centered and compassionate. So, for this podcast episode today, I'd like to ask you, Rashid, about imposter syndrome. And we're mm. going to unpack it. Uh, we'll lift up the bonnet, let you have a good look around it, and then get some top tips for you to share with um, people listening to this or watching it on YouTube on imposter syndrome. Mm. So, Rashid, are you up for the challenge? Oh, I'm, you know me, I'm always up for the challenge. I love these kind of topics, yeah. It's an interesting one, actually. Let's just say that Imposter syndrome is a very interesting one. And I say it's interesting because I've been a coach for over 20 years now. And when I first was coaching, the words imposter syndrome weren't said that often. Words like confidence and so on were, and they are, they're kind of often related, um, or they can be have different nuances. But imposter syndrome is something that comes up a lot when I am running, giving talks, running leadership development programs etc cetera, etc cetera. and it's interesting one because i'm wondering if it's something that almost like the common co cold that can sometimes seem as though it's catching or people will describe it to many things that may or may not be the same thing so with imposter syndrome it's really important that we begin to kind of unpack and do lift under the bonnet and think actually well what do we mean and what we're talking about when we mean imposter syndrome um, and and then to begin to explore how we move forward from that. So I'm really looking forward to today's topic. Yeah, you're right, actually, because it's something that, you know, there are books on it now. It didn't exist. It probably did, but it didn't have a name for it. And actually, let's start then by finding out what exactly is imposter syndrome. So how would you define it? What's your take on it? Yeah. So I guess it's interesting that even defining it, that for each person, including many of the people who are listening to it, they, they might think, oh yeah, that's me, I've got imposter syndrome. But when each person kind of describes it, um, it might look quite different to, to them in terms of the very specifics of what's going on for them. But very often, you know, that imposter syndrome, it, it's a kind of a sense that um, it might well be for some people, am I good enough? Am I ready? Um, I seem to be different to everybody else here. Um, uh, am I as experienced or skillful or ready as everybody else? Um, am I the only person who looks like me, thinks like me? Um, all sorts of things, or am I worthy of this that's happening to me? Or, are, you know, all sorts of different variations of those kind of themes. It's, it's, it's interesting also because generally in my experience, that imposter syndrome, or using that word imposter syndrome, I hear it more often that women will often say it far more often. Maybe that's also because sometimes for women in the workplace, they're more likely, not always, that there may well be so many, so many different hats that they have to wear and different roles that they may well be having to perform at work and at home. They're more likely to be a key carer. They're more likely to be um, in many situations um, looking after the kids or the main person with responsibilities here or there. There are just all sorts of different dynamics where that is often one co component, although not always, but I would say in my experience, yeah. it's a large it's a large percentage. Or without going off too much on a tangent, they don't see role models within the business themselves and actually have to right. fit in or and then their values, their ethics and everything go out of the board and then right. you start doubting yourself and that imposter syndrome could right. set in maybe not all aspects of it but certainly some right. it's different like you said for many people yeah right and so you've got that so whereby it may well be for, for 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 women or if you're somebody who sees in any way that I don't look like many of the other people in the organization because of my age because of my race because of my ethnicity because of my gender because of my sexuality because of my the way I think or because of my size my shape there might be so many different factors or I don't look the same way that other people do, that there can be just so much that can be going on there. And it's interesting about that word then, imposter syndrome. And to 
I kind of want to dive in and share, Nadine, something that I often share when it comes to this, and it might kind of unpack some of the other things that you'll no doubt quiz me on, is that I often say people to people to begin to nip this in the bud, because often it's given us just one term, you know, one term. I'll often say to people, if you've got the job, you're not an imposter. And if, you're in, if you've been invited into the room or the meeting or whatever, or the project, you're not an imposter. And even if you were, that's dealing it head on. So in one way, you're not imposter because you're invited. But even if you were, what is it that you uniquely bring to that room? Because there isn't anyone else who looks like you, thinks like you, or does things your own way, or speaks like you, or has your personality that enriches that room, that organization, that team, that project, by virtue of you being there that wasn't there before. So I think there's a lot here. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, um, when I was just thinking about what topic should we do today, um, I know it's back in the 70s, there were a couple of psychologists who first described imposter syndrome in high achieving businesswomen. So that's where the base mm -hmm. of it actually came from. And mm -hmm. since then, experts, you know, you've dealt with, you know, coached thousands of people through your workshops, through your courses and your coaching sessions. It's common in all genders and, and many lines of work. But again, like you said, it has other elements as well, whether it's ethnicity, backgrounds, whether it's to do with um, sexual orientation, whether it's gender, there's all sorts mm -hmm. of things that come into play here. But actually, um, something else I found out that uh, going back to good old scientist Albert Einstein. Um, I'm not scared, but I'm now I'm really scared the fact that I invited the dean to write to the journalist. No, I'm, I'm loving it. No, I'm really loving it. It's great. It's great hearing all of this. Stuff. No, that 82 percent of um, as many as 82 percent of all people felt like a fraud at some point. So I think. Let's unpack it further because imposter syndrome might ebb and flow. It might mm -hmm. be there as a constant. It's going to be varying from person to person. Mm -hmm. But you mentioned about confidence as well. So how is imposter syndrome different from confidence? Does that make sense? That it does. And I think that's a really, really good question. I think sometimes they are used interchangeably. And I think that sometimes, you know, we might come back to this at a at another point, but language can be really interesting and the language that we say and that we use to ourselves and with others. So we've got a whole range of differing things here and potentially different kind of symptoms and things that may well be going on. It's a bit like sometimes when you're unwell and then many of the things may have similar symptoms, the headache, the fever and thinking, oh, that's me, oh, that's me, that's me. Because sometimes, so if we kind of unpack, maybe it might, what might be good for us to do again is to unpack some different threads, different things that can be there when we're talking about um, things like imposter syndrome and so on. It might kind of help us and help the listener to kind of navigate their way around. Are we talking about confidence? Are we talking about the competence that the competence or the skills that you might feel you need to do the job? Are we talking a little bit about um, about whether you feel um, supported or or, or safe? Um, are we talking about that you're the only person who looks like you or thinks like you who is in that particular kind of a room? Do you feel as though sometimes that um, other people are part more of the in crowd? Is it, a, a, is it a cultural thing? Is it personality? There can be all sorts of different dynamics here. So I think that it's interesting when we, um, in a previous episode, Nadine, we were talking about, and we'd started off by looking at the importance of being authentic. The beauty of that, and for people who haven't listened to that episode, I would say that for many people, that episode will be useful because Sometimes if we're being authentic, it allows us to value what I uniquely bring to the table. So sometimes with this whole thing around imposter syndrome, there is something about, do I myself see myself, my skills, my magic and what I bring to the table that might well be unique or different to somebody else? So that inner piece of work may well be very innocent, important to do. Just to remember then we talked about the inner and then the outer look. It yeah. might be that there might be, we need to be looking at, okay, what's going on? Are there other people who look like me or think like me? Is it my perception 
Is it something where I'm going to need to have conversations with other colleagues and find out or other people in other organizations or similar roles and feel if they're feeling the same thing as me? Is my Because often, Nadine, one thing that's worth flagging up at this point that I find when I'm coaching people and when I'm running those leadership programs you pointed to, and it is common across the board, many people do not see their own magic and their talents. They don't see the gifts that they bring to the table. And it's important that they do in order that they're also able to be aware of it and to help that for others. So there's a lot, again, that's going on here that may well be going on when we just label it imposter syndrome and sometimes parking the label imposter syndrome sometimes and thinking, well, what are the constituent things that you're describing here may actually be more useful than just saying imposter syndrome that we just accept yeah. And it's like with procrastination. It doesn't fit yeah. all, does it? So, yeah. and and actually, um, it, it can be, you know, a psychological pattern which is characterized by that self doubt and that all encompassing fear of being unmasked um, as a fraud. Or it could actually be down to certain workplace scenarios. It could be delivering a presentation and the stakes are high. It could be leading a high stakes project. Um, it could be facing a performance review. So actually just saying imposter syndrome um, doesn't really tackle what is really happening sure. under the bonnet, but equally, and that's where that over 80% figure comes from, is that it could be just from now and again that people have those symptoms of imposter syndrome, which are really real and affect their ability to lead because that's really what it what it's all about really isn't it it's the, the fact the impact that it has on your leadership skills so and you point, a, and you put, yeah yeah from well, a sole leader perspective sorry Rashid um why then is it important to address imposter syndrome so when you're coaching leaders how do you actually approach the subject of imposter syndrome and get them to open up how they're really feeling because like you said it could be about situational things or it could be all-encompassing yeah um i think and that thing that you just mentioned there and that at that tail end there was so useful because is it situational or is it all-encompassing so i think for anyone who's already listening and gripped and really thinking oh that's interesting or that's me or this or oh, i hadn't really thought about that or all of these things i the first thing i would actually say to do is actually think about if for you is it situational in which case which situations or is it constant? I'm feeling that. And then let's keep a note of that for when we come back to the tips and as we explore explore this topic. I think when I'm running um, workshops and talks, actually often it's really interesting. Um, what I would do is provide, it's important that I create a safe space that people can just very open up and share what they're, how they're feeling and what they're wanting from the program. And it's amazing the of times that people would just open up and say, for me, it's confidence or it's imposter syndrome. And they are the most, they are probably most the most common things that people will, the challenges that people will present um, um, to uh, um, to me. That I guess in terms of the challenges that can be, I mean, on an individual level, it could be just sometimes that you're just second guessing yourself, you're doubting yourself. You, um, you, you might be really stressing a lot about things. It might be that you are perhaps um, spending, I don't want to say necessarily too much time, but too much energy. It can be a lot of emotional energy. Um, it might be that you're having to, you might be finding actually there are times that you're having to play shy on yourself or show up kind of slightly differently. So it can be playing out in terms of that authenticity side. So it can have that make that impact there. But I also would say as a leader, it might well be that with it not being looked at, it might well be that when other people who may well have the same thing, if you don't kind of begin to think as with anything in leadership, any trait or any challenge that you have, if it's not something to, that you're able to kind of look at and compassionately, which is really important, it might mean that when other people have got similar challenges, you may not as a leader pick up on that or be able to or feel confident about supporting with that. So the chances are if you feel like that, other people, and it's a bit like, you know, Nadine, it makes me think a little bit about this, a bit like, when we step back and things a bit like presenting, often when we teach things like presentation skills, some people often might well say, um, well, I'm not good at this. I'm not confident. I'm not like that. And then other people even in the room might think, oh my gosh, I thought you were extremely confident and so yeah. on. So sometimes your own perception isn't also the reality in terms of how you are, how you show up, your performance. 
and so on. So again, this is where, you know, you've used it in our podcast already a number of times, that word about that self-awareness. And with the soul leader, the soul leader spends a lot of time in being very clear. Who am I? What am I about? What are my values? And taking a lot of time to self-reflect, actually. And the self-reflection, both alone and also then as we begin to, over time, develop that peer network, I mean, was it just me in that meeting? I felt a little bit like, or I felt as though when I said that, and then when somebody else said it 10 minutes later, that you've got something to be able to measure it, because otherwise you don't want to just be stuck into your own perceived self-diagnosis that's something that may or may not be true. Or as you and, and this again links to the powerful thing you've said about, okay, is it situational? Whereby... Um, it is only when I present, I feel as I'm imposter, it's only when I've got to go to the senior meeting, or is it all of the time that I feel like that? Because it might be a skills thing, it might be a competence thing, it might be a cultural thing that people haven't made you feel welcome, or people are, or, or it might be a microaggression where people are, there may well be, so we need to really name it what it actually is, and, and, and as valuable as a catch-all as imposter syndrome is, I think it doesn't necessarily help. It's a bit like, Nadine, I was going to say before, when people say to me, sometimes I procrastinate, I procrastinate. Well, when you say procrastinate, what are you talking about? What do you mean? It might well be that you're not ready. It might well be that you're unsure. It might be that you haven't got the information. It might mean that you're tired. It might well mean that you are waiting or you're delaying things. It could be a whole range of things that we have just labeled procrastination. What do we mean? And this is why I say with language is so important. I have a saying that language is our greatest contribution to understanding and misunderstanding. Yeah, you know, it, so it's... I mean, and like you said, I mean, imposter syndrome, um, you know, you, you're just doubting your own skills and successes. It can ebb and flow. It's not necessarily a fixed state, but it, it it's not a, a mental health diagnosis, but it can really cause harm in different areas of, of your life. And, you know, if you think your career successes is due to luck instead of your skills and hard work, um, you may be less likely then to a promotion or raise. And one of the things that I've noticed over the years is that often um, thinking about the gender split, that men will get promoted on potential, whereas women will get promoted on experience. And therein lies the gap. Because partly because women haven't had the same, as we've discussed before in another podcast, the same leadership opportunities, mm -hmm. you know, that is being addressed, but it's still a long, long way to go to get that parity of esteem, to get that parity of opportunity. So already there, you can see how imposter syndrome can manifest itself if the structures are in place where men don't need the experience to get a job, it's just their potential, but women have to say they've got that experience to do the same job. Now, I know I'm generalizing there, but I've seen those patterns at play. I've chaired panel discussions around that. And if women in the workplace are having breaks for whatever reason, then coming back as well, mm. that's when that self-doubt, that confidence, and that's where imposter syndrome, it means different things to different people. But, but it is an important one to address. But I imagine even talking about it, it's got to probably be one of the hardest things to speak up about. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about you, if you're doing a group session, do people actually admit to it in a group session? Or is it something they wait until they've got you privately or it's an individual session they're doing with you? I, I, thanks for putting all those things you've got on the table, Nadine, because I think they're so powerful. First of all, you're right, that there can be those things that we experience that... Um, that we're experiencing within the culture of the particular organization or of the particular sector? Are we finding time and time again that be it for women or people from a certain background, cultural thingy or class are having to prove themselves time and time again? Are there those things that are happening either organizationally, um, uh, industry-wise and so on that can have that impact? There's a couple of models and I'm not a, um, a social scientist, but there are a couple of uh, models that look at all the different things that impact us on as human beings. So there's kind of our personal, then there's this thing about the uh, 
I'm, I'm using my hands so people who are listening to the audio, you're, I'm, you're just going to have to imagine that I'm doing these these circles that are getting bigger and bigger, starting with an inner circle. He's going doing to it out. beautifully as well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so there's the kind of the personal, then there's the interpersonal all of your relationships. And if you can then imagine the next circle out, it might be the organizational, and then you might have the institution, and then they might get the cultural and the structural. And you can see that in many things, when it comes to things like gender, when it comes to race, and many other things that all of these different things may impact. And we might personally just personalize that I'm this, when it might actually be, actually, that's what I'm finding out in my relationships. That's what I'm finding out in my organization, in my team. And then structurally, when I join this organization and so on, we can see those, you know, the structural, the organization, the structural, and the interpersonal. So sometimes we might need to really unpack these things and think actually where is it is it something that's unique to me is it something that's unique to this particular team because it could be that in the next team ne next door that, that i'm i'm not i'm going to this meeting and i feel can't completely comfortable on you to this time i'm doubting myself i do feel the imposter syndrome because of, there may well be all sorts of different dynamics that you talk about that are going on is it just that it relates to um is it a, a thing where i'm actually feeling that imposter because I um I have I've taken nine months out since I since since being pregnant since I've I've been on maternity leave and then taken a couple of extra months to do X or Y. There may be all sorts of differing things that it may well that it that that may well be factors that are at play for you. Some that might relate to you, some might relate to your circumstances, some relate to skills and so on. We're all on that journey. Interestingly, picking up on then that, that question really then directly, it's really interesting, Nadine. When I'm running leadership skills, often people are particularly programs. When I'm running a program over a long period of time, I ask people what they want to do. It. People often are very, at very much at the beginning will just offer. Actually, for me, it's about confidence. That and and that therein lies another lesson. If you are a leader, if you're a senior leader, and you're creating the culture, a sole leader creates a culture in which people can open up and they can talk. And it might be just in that one to one, you know, that people can say, you know, I'm like, you know, how are you doing? Oh, you know what, Nadine, you know, thanks so much. Um, I've now been here for six months. I feel as I'm okay on this, but I'm really not sure about that because you've created the conditions in which I can really open up. So the soul leader does that. They create the conditions in which people can really open up about how they're actually feeling. And a good soul leader can really help that person on that journey. No, you created that. <laughs> You're really good at blah, 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 and help us be it with the confidence, the competence, the skills, the training, the development, or whatever it is that we need. So the sole leader is responsible not just for their own development and making sure everyone feels safe, honored, valued, and sees their magic and their skills and their talents and their competence and all of the rest of it that this stuff points to when we're talking about imposter syndrome, imposter syndrome and how far they're welcomed and whether they've got the networks and relationships that they need. Um, but they're doing that you know, they're doing that within the organization because they know how they felt. So again, if you felt like that as a leader in your journey, or you're aware of that, you've got a responsibility as a sole leader. You can be, you can begin to make, be making that, that difference, but it's good. We've identified that there could be all of these different things going on, which helps us to begin to think, aha, what is it that I'm going to need to do to make me feel more um, better about myself, whether it's some self-development, whether it's with teams, whether it's getting some support, whether it's me asking deeper questions about, do I really want to be here? Because also sometimes link next door, sometimes to it, sometimes what can happen and it's next door, but it can kind of seep into it is where people's confidence dips over time because of their lived experience um, within an organization that they feel devalued. It might be after that career break that you said, or the maternity leave, or because of a certain project that has dipped their, 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 their confidence in some way. They might then call that confidence rather imposter syndrome. Interestingly, imposter syndrome may be more likely to be that somebody calls it when they're newer to a team or to a role or a project. If they're more established, they might call it confidence or other things, interestingly, because the imposter you know, you know, it's more like, or if there's been, you know, it's, so it's often at that moment, if you think about that word imposter, would tend to be often earlier when somebody's kind of come in generally, although not always. Yeah, I, I don't particularly like the, the wording, but it is what it is. And people know it now as imposter syndrome. And, uh, you know, as, as I said, if, if, if people, many people out there will have been affected by it, will continue to. Um, and it will affect the way that they lead and they manage and, you know, for all sorts of different variety. It could be when they receive criticism, that's when it mm. kind of kicks in. Mm. When they're joining a new leadership team, 
Mm. Um, and you're having to um, constantly question yourself whether you're capable of you know guiding the team effectively or being part of a new leadership team even though you may have excelled in those roles before comparing achievements with other people as well and, and social media you you know that becomes more prevalent now as a result of that I mean it could be that you're in a team of experts and you start doubting your mm. own expertise mm. um, mention about public speaking or you know when you're giving a presentation that sort of anxiety receiving a promotion um, you question whether you truly deserve it. Networking events, you know, for some people, that is their nightmare events. They're not networking events. Yeah. You feel yeah. inadequate and struggle to engage with people. Um, you know, all of those things and so much more. I'm, I'm sure some of those things have resonated with people, but they will affect the way you lead or manage, won't they? They, they really will. Um, I think there's something here about... Um, and this is where some of the soul leader principles are kind of very useful. There is something about maybe a, a good starting point here for if somebody has been listening to this and they've had the things that we've already talked about and some of the ways in which you've highlighted where they can impact. I would say this is where what I would call compassion and some people now also call self-compassion. For me, compassion is compassionate and it begins at home. I call it self-compassion. Being really kind and caring to oneself is really important. What are the things that you're kind of saying to yourself? Um, being on your own side is really, really important because be it that it is confidence, be it is that um, imposter syndrome, be it any other thing, that in the leadership journey, it's really important that you're able to be kind to yourself. And also it's gonna be really important that you can give yourself a fair and adequate score sheet by, what the, by, what I, by which I mean. Sometimes the language that we start to use with ourselves, I'm not good at this, I'm rubbish at that, or I, you know. If you'd heard somebody else say that, you might take them to HR. I mean, the things that people say to themselves, do you mean? You might take them to HR. And I think this is very important also when it comes to leadership, because you've got to be able to, you're wanting to be able to, you, you're wanting to be able to give that really fair and really balanced feedback to your team and so on. So to address whatever we've called it, is going to be important for you and for others and to make sure you get that job that's yours or you can go for that promotion or that you are able to articulate the skills that you bring to the table that otherwise you might not have done. There are elements here about the things that are about personality. Some people might have a style where they might be far more quiet or they don't shout about things. Other people may or may not. So there'll be uh, all sorts of different dimensions, um, um, things at play in terms of your personality. This is where sometimes where things like some of these personality tests and so on can sometimes be useful, or again, just a good peer network of those people or mentors actually. So sometimes actually with some of these things, mentors, and particularly something like an imposter syndrome and a good peer network can be really useful because they can be a really good space where you've got that space where you can show up, pause, breathe, get that affinity, get some feedback, get some support, feel comfortable, feel valued, feel, reaffirmed you get many organization things like also staff networks these days where, which is often where then people of the same not not always necessarily exclusively but ha by whatever um criteria you you um are looking at yourself through len that lens that might be um that there might be a, a race network a women's network a dis um a disabled staff a long-term carers network sometimes actually it's being in some of these spaces where people who may well have some of the same characteristics or challenges, where you're really, where you're definitely not an imposter, where you're definitely not an imposter, can be really useful. So you can speak about and breathe and air some of these issues. And actually that can be a very, very good measure of actually, oh my goodness, it's that. And then actually, is it that you're an, is it that you're an, an imposter? And then, remember, this is why I go back to my in, in, initial definition. If you've been got the job, if you are invited onto that project, you're not an imposter. So what we've got are actually then other things may well be very serious that are going on either for yourself or for others or thinking, but it, it means that we can then begin to deal with what it is because it might actually, you're, you're faced with microaggressions or the culture of the organization isn't supporting you or you yourself have just not had that space, that space or that support 
to value yourself or it might just be your personality your style is that you don't speak up about those particular things and you might need a little bit of development because now as a leader you're as a manager you're you the culture is that you speak up your achievements so Nadine it's so good that you've unpacked also some of the ways that this can impact on people and some of those other threads that somebody can actually think well hang on a minute what actually is this above the sniffles or whatever I'm thinking about this yeah. cold thing is or these symptoms that I'm describing it? What actually is going on here? What's going on? Yeah, indeed. And, and you know, you know, some people, well, many people wing it. And actually, sometimes you <coughs> have to because you have to react in the moment. Um, some people over prepare. Um, but I think we've all over the years sort of had to suddenly do something last minute and thought, oh, gosh, I just got just about got away with that. But then you think, well, actually, no, because it's all the experience and the skills that have brought you to that moment. Um, um, again, one size doesn't fit all here. But you started to give some really good practical advice um, mm. about reaching out and talking to people and finding those networks as well mm. so that you can share what's going on and then think, oh, gosh, I'm not alone here. What other practical advice and tips would you give to somebody who feels this way and wants to change their relationship with imposter syndrome? You know, can you, you know, make inroads into this straight away? Yeah, such a good question. I think that some of these tips are going to relate to things that I would say are really essential on your leadership journey. So there are going to be some things that are going to be important for you on your leadership journey and especially on your soul leader journey because if you're somebody who's wanting to be authentic and wanting to be true to yourself and wanting to make an impact and a difference in the world and sometimes with things like imposter syndrome or other things it may well be because you genuinely care and you're wanting to do really really well which is why you may well put an additional lens or pressure on yourself so I think one of the first things I would say is that recognize that culturally in many cultures, in many cultures around the world, we're recording this in the UK, it can be there true in much of the West and, and, and all sorts of other parts of the world. We tend to be taught to see life through the lens of either lack or what we should have. So what that does immediately is means that I'm looking through the lens of, oh, I could be better. Oh, I'm not quite as good as that person. You know, you think about the people who might be getting their exam results or the person who's... The, we, we, we constantly are seeing things through that lens of that comparison. So that's one thing to first of all clock and notice that what can happen is it may well be that, that, cult, that um, culturally um, that there is an element of that that can go on that can kind of mean that we're already... Um, pressurizing ourselves or feeling that we're not good enough or that we're feeling inadequate it's there we tend to see life through the lens i don't have that i don't know don't have those much money that can can be doing that don't so, compare yourself to others don't compare That's yourself e easy, to others. easy said than done though don't compare yourself to others <laughs> yeah. um that taking that time to really self-reflect is really important for so many different reasons pause how am i actually doing here what's what's working well what do i need to work on see yourself as a third person actually can be really really useful here um sometimes in terms of because if there are very practical if there is a practical element of this that you need to look at seeing yourself in this a third person when we're doing sometimes things like um isn't it nadine when we're um teaching people things like media training actually what we're doing when we're training them and often we do playback and so on we're helping them to begin to see themselves very um in the best sense of through a, a real objective lens of the audience I, that well yeah of their audience yeah. and i've done that well do that that went well that went well here's what i need to do so you can begin if you can begin to see yourself in that way and a bit like we might just put oh that went well that thing next time i might need to if you can begin to do that that will really really help you to be fair in your self-critique i think then some of those other things we talked about are incredibly important that network is going to be important or those safe places where you can open up and share because it might well be all sorts of things are going on. It might be you just need somebody to talk about and talk about the shared challenges that you have. It might well be somebody who's a good peer that you do that peer mentoring of each other. It might be you need a mentor who's been there and fought the challenges that you fought that may well be it. It may well be that it's all sorts of things. Yes, 
you're not treated as though you're welcome. Yes, there isn't the right space. Yes, there's sexism, misogyny or whatever or whatever. Or no, it's just a very tough environment in which people are, are very tough and that, that people expected to just show up in one particular style. I think that's going to be really important. And you may not be able to necessarily always find that within your team, within your organization. It might well be you've got those mentors that are kind of out, out, outside. Maybe what at one, maybe we'll do a separate episode on like who we you should have in your peer network and mentoring and all of these kind of themes. Mentoring would be a good one, wouldn't it? Definitely. Yeah. And how mentoring. to network. And how so to you know, network. The list is growing. <laughs> the list is really growing, but I think that these things are really going to be important for you to to have because sometimes it is about just that self-reflecting but also one of the other things I would just say that and this will help you with all of the thing with many of the things that you describe be it that you're going for that job interview or the promotion or you're wanting to do well in that next project or whatever and I recommend people do this on a lot of my courses two things um open a document call it accomplishments list everything that you've ever achieved in every single role um start giving yourself good feedback and I um I recommend that people on all of my courses keep a, and I even, I even do this, I have a folder, an email folder, I call it feedback every time that somebody sends something positive about me, I put it in there. I very rarely read it, but put it in there. Because put you, it on a mug. <laughs> yeah, put it on a mug. Or some, some, I've got a client and they've surrounded themselves with things that they've done and that they've achieved. You might be somebody who needs to visually see it. Sometimes you might be the kind of person you're so focused on the next thing, or you may not see your natural skills because they're just so natural to you. You might need visual reminders. You might need those audio reminders by people saying you might need to listen to things like this that are just nourishing you. You're going to need to find out as a leader what are the things that nourish you nourish me is it at a certain moments like we've described what well, i know i'm going to need that thing to give myself the confidence or that pep talk with somebody is it a long going course or is it that actually no this isn't this isn't on me this is the organization that i'm working for or the team and then i okay then what am i going to deal with that but those yeah. are those are some things that will help i think as well how about uh comfortable with accepting praise so someone gives you a compliment you often hear the but word yeah thank you but um stop at the thank you <laughs> yeah you know, i think it's being humble but equally that pushing back on praise and then you start getting into that pattern i know i tend to do that if someone compliments me on an outfit i always try and excuse the outfit as though you know it's going just to say thank you so mm -hmm. i think we're, we could all be guilty of that i don't know i think it's such an important one nadine to begin to um, embrace that to really when people do th say those things to really embody and welcome it because also I'd say in leadership and we'll come onto it I'm no doubt in our future in Paul podcast this is really important the ability to give people rich real kind compassionate constructive um, feedback that helps people grow is essential often people aren't given it and it might be why people don't value themselves or see their magic whatever way to be around it or see or see what their potential is and all of that stuff because they've never been given that feedback but equally it might mean when there are things that people do need to develop or where there are big problems in the in the workplace that that people don't challenge because it seems this link but uh, not linked but in one of our previous podcasts we talked we touched on some of those inquiries and those scandals and so on that can happen very often that's because that there's not been the transparency or that openness or organizations held to account so us being able to develop that um, muscle around giving ourselves good balanced kind compassionate feedback doing the same thing for our teams and our colleagues and to our organization is essential and it's a trademark of a soul leader yeah that compassion i think that's a lovely point as we sort of head towards the end of this podcast about being kind to yourself um that you're capable of success and mistakes can happen that's natural in life as well so it's not trying to gloss over those errors or mistakes that you know you will encounter projects um and situations will be challenging but it's actually having the skills to do that so sort of finally if people are thinking god you know this is me or elements of it is me or no, there's another part of it that they haven't discussed, but they want to find out more. How, how can you help people overcome imposter syndrome? I, I know you've got your sole um, leader course and there's all sorts of resources. Obviously, some are complimentary, some are free. Others, you know, people have got um, the time and the money to invest in. You know, th there's there's different things for different people. So what, what could what can people do? 
Yeah, I'd say some things you could do, I mean, head over to soul-trader.biz. There's lots of things there. There are some three tips from, from me on various topics. Actually, one thing that might be really nourishing is listening to those inspiring interviews of other leaders because I'm quizzing them on them, their journey, the ups and downs. And sometimes when you hear other people who also had that doubt, were unsure, that moment, could they do this? It can be very powerful. So hearing those stories of other people. So did you say the soul? Um, inspiring, inspiring, in, in, inspiring interviews. Is um, that on your soul trade or soul leader? Oh, I beg your pardon. Did I say soul trader? Sorry, soul-leader.biz. So on soul-leader.biz, you will find, um, on the one hand, you will find some of my short tips on various topics and you'll find the inspiring interviews. And actually, yeah, those interviews can be so insightful because the things that you often don't hear and when sometimes you don't hear the other people's stories that they've been through the same things as you. So that may well be really helpful when it comes to things like imposter syndrome and other things that are just can help you boost your clarity, your confidence and insight, frankly, in terms of leadership and so on. You may also find, keep an eye out for this ever growing um, podcast series because there may well be any of the, many of the linked topics that you might find that they, they all tend to interlink confidence interlinks to this authenticity has a link to that so you might find those all very useful and also um most many leaders are are keen to constantly le learn i i would say also take that time to reflect every day in leadership is a leadership journey have have a sit down on a coffee with somebody you know like and respect have, what you've been your experiences with this it might well be something that 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 is very um that that might be a low-hanging fruit you can do. You might want to, if you are a leader, have a conversation around some of these topics if you've got a safe space with colleagues, with peers, with others. Could other topics that we're talking about here that you might also want to begin to have a discussion about within your organisation or in or in your team can be really... Yeah. Because it's not only you that might be affected by it, but actually it's your team members. And actually once you understand that, that explains why... You know, something we've maybe done at the last minute or why someone's put loads and loads of research into something, you know, over prepared. You know, it could be, you know, it's not necessarily about um, just coming along and having that lack of confidence because you've winged it or whatever. It could be people who've over prepared. And actually, that is very damaging at times as well um, for certain situations. So, yeah, I think it's just being alive to it, isn't it? Aware of the fact that imposter syndrome and, and all that that entails um whether it's situational or in or in really internal to you and, and and encompassing every part of your life that's right it makes me think of one last thing i want to bring in yeah. and just before i lose it that it's really important and if we, it takes us back in a way to where we start so if we are talking about imposter syndrome one of the things that soul leader does is make everybody feel welcome if we're making everyone feel welcome and valued then this thing about imposter syndrome begins to really dissolve because we feel honored, we feel welcome, we feel safe, we feel seen, we feel heard. So those what those then when we think about what's completely different to an imposter, that invitation and that welcome and feeling like a guest or feeling as though we belong, these things we can begin to live as a soul leader. And then it's really important so that we make that space for, for the and it because otherwise the danger can be on a low level, you've not thought about, have you welcomed people at the beginning of the meeting? Have you introduced people? Have you invited people to turn their cameras on? There's somebody who's a new member of the team they can't see. So these little things that will either make people feel as though they're not welcome or seen or valued or heard or safe to them feeling very, very welcome. And that's the opposite. That The soul leader does the complete opposite to imposter syndrome. They make people feel valued as though they belonged, as though they feel honored their customers, their colleagues, and so on. So what we want to do is turn that out from being a thing that I'm sitting with. So how can I honour and value every customer, every person who comes through the door, be it in this hospital, in this shop, in this store, online to our organisation or agency? Imagine that, because I think whilst we use the word soul, um, and whilst a lot of the time we will be talking a lot of the time here about you as an individual leader, the soul leader has got work to do. So actually, there is a side in which, this might sound like a funny thing for me to say, and it comes up a lot of the time, for example, when I'm teaching people presentation skills, I'll often say the thing to people. Also, the, it's make it then all about your audience. Yeah. 
yeah and the audience are willing you to do well that's the thing willing you often to do people, well. people often think oh my goodness they're not going to like me um they're not going to like me. i've got to say it's hang on whoa do you know what i mean they're often thinking about their own issues and challenges right. they haven't even given you a second thought as to how you might be feeling inside right. and, and actually, that links and yeah. then that links doesn't it what's going on for everybody else so having listened to this what might be going on for the other person who might be nervous unsure might be feeling imposter syndrome so so reach out you can begin to turn that the other way around otherwise we can become so insular that we're not aware of what's going on for the lived experience for all of your colleagues for all of your peers for all of your customers and so on and you can really turn this around in a really really rich way step by step day by day moment by moment well thank you rashid for being authentic for being heart-centered and compassionate, which you always are um, day in, day out. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed uh, this podcast episode on imposter syndrome. So Rishi, thank you for your time. Thank you so much, Nadine, as always. Thank you for the brilliant, probing, rich and insightful questions. And thanks everyone for listening to us. We'll see you next time. See you.